Hello everyone, welcome to Grandstand Sports Data, and today we have a video for your 2023 NBA offseason tracker. We will be tracking all of the available players along with some of the players that we think could be the most tradable in this year's free agent class or free agent offseason. Not only are we just putting the people that we think or the players that we think are available, all together, we're also analyzing some guys who have already been traded, uh, what their ranks are in terms of overall statistic of win share per 48, and some other variables as well. So let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start with basically a description of what you're going to see. All the way on the left, you're going to see the rankings. That's pretty obvious that we have. Then you're going to see on the next column, the player, pretty obvious as well. Next column, you're going to see team, and that's a team that they're currently on right now. Um, we only have it filled in for guys who are not who are not free agents, who are trade bait, or who have been victim of a trade already. Um, next column, you're going to find their position, and then the next column, you're going to find win shares per 48. Now, we did this a little bit different here at Grandstand Sports Data. What we did is we took last year's win share per 48, so the 2022 to 2023 season, and we made that our highest weight. Then we took the year before that, and we made that our second highest weight. So basically, we broke it down 50, 30, 20, with 20% being three years ago. So what we wanted to do, and basically if you're looking at it as a pie chart, is make the most weight be last year's performance, the second most or second biggest weight in the statistical, um, I guess you would call it variable, to be the second highest weight. And then three years ago or two and a half years ago, however you want to say it, would be the smallest weight because it's the furthest from you know their current performance. And that's what makes up these numbers. Next column, you're going to see the salary column. And the salary column is simply just what their situation is right now with their salary. If they've been traded, it will be highlighted in yellow. As you can see, just to jump ahead, number 27, Marcus Smart, he's been traded to the Memphis Grizzlies. We highlight it in yellow because it's been completed. And then what we would do is we would black out um, what we will describe in a few minutes. Um, tier will just be, um, we got this from a website, I believe it was Spot Rack. They basically just labeled the tier of the player. We have, we kept guys that were stars, all stars and starters. We didn't do any rotational players. Any, so we came up with 46 guys that we thought were either starters, all stars, stars, or guys who are fading stars, but still have that name recognition. Um, next you will see one, two, three, four. This is based on um, our analysis on teams that are interested in this specific player. How we came across this is we looked at reliable sources and who they mentioned were interested in the player. And reliable sources, we mean ESPN.com, CBS Sportsline, all of those websites, Fox Sports, yada, yada. We did not go to your local blog and have some guy like, you know, Johnny Walker talk about that he thinks that, you know, James Harden's going to the Okinawa Ninjas. No, we're not doing that. We went to reliable sources. We did extensive research on each of these players, and we came up with these teams. The team you will see from one to four, the team that was most notable or being most, um, I guess you would say, uh, talked about for that certain player would be number one all the way to number four would be the team that was maybe, maybe mentioned but not being uh, talked about throughout the whole um, in every article I guess I would call it uh, on the far right is notes that's basically notes for me to translate to you guys and also to keep me up to date because I'm almost tracking almost over a thousand players if you count the, all the sports that it that we track here at Grandstand Sports Data. So you're talking about soccer, free transfer windows. You, that's that's like thousands of players on its own. We have NHL um, uh, window as well, or availability, same video as this that will be coming out within the next few days as well. So we've been tracking a bunch of sports. So this isn't the easiest thing. Uh, if you like our heart, you like our grit, please give us a like, please give, give us a subscription if you're into this type of stuff and like to see more of it. 
Also, I would like to add that if you throughout this presentation have seen a player that your team has specifically showed interest in and it does have a reliable source, but we don't have it here, throw that in the comments down below and we'll add it. We'll add it to our next video. I think we should update this maybe every couple of weeks, maybe a month. It depends on how each free agency pans out. So if the NBA free agency is kind of slow and there's not too much buzz, then maybe we'll take a little bit to, to post an update on our tracker. Um, for NHL and all that, we'll describe that and that it's in, that's initial video. But we're basically just going to go about it in the pace that the actual free agency is working. So let's start from the bottom up. We got at number 46, Kyle Kuzma. Not much to say about Kyle Kuzma. He's getting a lot of interest from the Houston Rockets. Um, he also declined a player option not that long ago of $13 million. Also, I just want, before I start um, just getting into it, we also just started this list based on um, right the day after the NBA Finals had ended, we started creating this list. So some people may not be um, applicable to this uh, anymore. I would say a guy like that would be number 42, which is Buddy Heald. Um, we labeled him as trade bait at first, and it seems like he didn't have any more interest when we updated this file, which was as of this morning, which would be June 30th. So as of June 30th, Buddy Heald did have a lot of team interest from the NBA Finals until June 30th, but has not since. Um, Russell Westbrook, we have him at 45. Now that the Clippers have shown that they're not interested, uh, kind of, I guess I would say spoiler alert, later on in this presentation towards the the better half of the players, you're going to see why Russell Westbrook is not um, basically in the Clippers' eyes anymore. Uh, coming on into number 44, Dylan Brooks, he's had interest from the Houston Rockets and the Indiana Pacers. Uh, Kelly Oubre is also mentioned here. We also talked on Buddy Heald. Um, P.J. Washington, he's been, I would say, a little bit of a hot commodity when we first did this, so after the NBA Finals, but then moving in, you know, coming in closer to July, teams have kind of, I guess, shied away, I guess I would call it. Jordan Clarkson, he got the, um, opted into that player option with the Utah Jazz. We have Gordon Hayward as trade bait, as a fading um, NBA All-Star, I guess you would call him, a fading NBA All-Star. We think that he's going to be a trade piece to match money in a deal. So if someone that's incoming to Charlotte, if they're a lot of cap space, Gordon Hayward would be used in that trade. Also, Ben Simmons, we have remorse labeled under his tier. This is buyer's remorse that we're signaling from the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Also, hasn't been one of the uh, a good performer at all since he's been in the NBA, but Brooklyn will use him as a cap dump. Um, Karis LeVert, not really getting any interest as of yet. He's more of the domino fall guy, I guess I will call. I think guys like um, Karis LeVert, um, Kelly Oubre, Russell Westbrook would be another one. He's a do they're domino fall guys, and what I mean by that is teams that have specific players on their own team are putting priority on those players, and if those don't work out within the next few days, then they will look at those domino guys. Moving back up to Dante DiVincenzo, he's actually been... Uh, I talked about commodity since opting out of that um, that Golden State Warriors contract. It looks like he's moving on. He's too expensive for Golden State, and Golden State's really pushed against it when it comes to the cap. Some teams that are ex seeing interest uh, would be the Los Angeles Lakers. They have been mentioned a lot, along with the Cleveland Cavaliers and the New York Knicks. Uh, Minnesota, not necessarily. There was just one minor report, and I just slipped it into the four spot. But... I would say the front runner in in DiVincenzo's camp would be the Los Angeles Lakers. Next, another commodity that everybody's talking about is Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant, he's unrestricted free agent, but with bird rights. Uh, he, I guess Spot Rack has him as a potential all-star. Um, with Portland being the front runner there, and Detroit is also heavy on his heels. Even though they're labeled number two here, they're very, very heavy on his heels. Where... I would say Dallas and Toronto are kind of in the background. They're mentioned, but they're in the background. 
another guy drawing a lot of interest, and that's Max Struess from his playoff performance. Detroit is really going after him heavily. Indiana is looking at him uh, heavily as well. Jordan Poole, he was labeled in a trade, so these next few guys have already, you know, they may move on. I mean, Jordan Poole may move on from Washington, but the fact is, is that the trade has already been taken care of. He's in Washington. And then Bradley Beal, we all know about him. Uh, I think that Bradley Beal, though, being ranked number 32 in terms of just his performance. This is based on his performance. This .090 of a win share is based on his performance in the last three years. He's the 32nd available. So that's not even all plays available in this year. So he needs to step that up. He does have the talent. Gary Trent Jr., he, I believe, opted in with Toronto his one year at 18.6. And on the second column, when we do the money situation, we're not doing the entirety of the contract. We're doing annual value. So 18.6 is his annual value. That's how much he'll be taking home in a year. Next, D'Angelo Russell. D'Angelo Russell looks like he's getting closer to a new contract with the Lakers, and it's very likely. Those were the common... Um, uh, the common denominator in his articles were very likely Lakers reunion. Uh, OJ Anubi, Anunobi, I can, I'll, I'll never be able to say it. I'm from Boston and Italian. This is just, it's not going to come out of my face the right way. Um, he is looking at or looking to be trade bait. Uh, a funny thing about him, though, is he hires a new agent in the middle of free agency. Something to look out for there, I think. Um, guess he's not really liking what his old agent was um was presented to him austin reeves looks like he's going to um get his offer matched by the lakers no matter who puts in an offer for him they look like they're willing to match that marcus smart coming in at number 27 he was trade bait from the boston celtics next would be dejounte murray dejounte murray he looks like he's going to be trade bait because it does not look like Atlanta can afford his salary next year. And it's going to be a huge payout for him is what they're suspect suspecting. So look out for him to be on the move. Draymond Green looks like he was in early talks after the NBA Finals. He looked like he was going to be leaving. Since Poole got traded, it looks like Golden State's going to be the leader in the clubhouse with those other teams being very secondary. Even though I have Sacramento labeled as two, Detroit as three, they were really like one-off just mentions. It's really Golden State is the leader for Draymond Green. Bruce Brown is starting to get a lot of interest from the Los Angeles Lakers, but it looks like a three-horse race with Denver Nuggets, Lakers, and the Dallas Mavericks actually showing some uh, interest as well. Harrison Barnes coming in as your top player when it comes to, I guess I would call these guys the bottom half. You can see on the averages, we're getting closer to the yellow when it comes to the wind shears per 48. So you were getting to the middle of the pack here. Uh, as you can tell, he has, um, he signed on with the, um, we did not update the contract because it was just this morning. So we just wanted to get out the video to you guys, but we will update that as soon as we can. So now moving on to the top half, the top half of the guys. Let's start down at the bottom, like usual. Josh Hart, the New York Knicks, he signed into the or opted into his player option of 13 million. Uh, Kyle Lowry, we have next on there, and I think it's kind of obvious. Kyle Lowry has the interest of the Portland Trailblazers because of the trade with Damian Lillard. I think that Lowry needs to be dumped in that trade because of the cap hit that he ensues. Um, Nas Reed signing on or re-signing with the Minnesota Timberwolves for three years, $14 million per year. Uh, Christian Wood is seeing a lot of interest from the Miami Heat. Chris Middleton, he looks like he's going to decline the player option, which he did, and then take a pay cut for Milwaukee. That sounds like what the most um, you know, likely scenario is for, for Chris. Uh, Fred Van Fleet, he's been a very prominent um, free agent here. He's He's been talked about a lot. So in the middle where you see salary, we have a lot of trade guys here because a lot of trade guys have been listed. If you take that away, Fred Van Fleet jumps up the list 
as being just an unrestricted free agent. He's highly ranked. He's expected to sign with the Houston Rockets, though. Just as of yesterday, I want to say the four to five articles had mentioned that he is expected to sign with the Houston Rockets. That is a Sports Illustrated, Sports Illustrated report as well. Zach Levine looks like he could be out of his way in Chicago. He looks like it looks like Chicago's having trade bait. They have shopped him already, but at an extremely high price, which I don't know if teams are going to be willing to do. Next, uh, Vooch already signed, so that was kind of self-explanatory. Uh, John Collins had been traded already because of the buyer remorse with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, Jay Crowder looks like to be a top guy in terms of uh, just what he brings to the court. He looks like he's going to re-sign with the Milwaukee Bucks, however, so nothing really sexy to talk about there. Pascal Siakam, he has received a lot of calls from teams in his availability. Um, upwards of five-plus teams are looking at Pascal Siakam and whether to Toronto is going to hold on to him or not. I think they also want to call him a domino guy. They want to see what happens to the guy that's above him as well, Brooke Lopez. Is Brooke Lopez going to re-sign with the Milwaukee Bucks? Is he going to go to Houston, where Houston's... Ex they are... They're willing to throw money around this year, Houston, especially with the new coach, Ime Odoka, a.k.a. Okie Doki. So, coming in next, Cameron Johnson. Cameron jo Johnson, he's a restricted free agent, so it looks like Brooklyn can match any offer that he gets while Detroit is real, really likes Cameron Johnson. Jacob Poldel, don't kill me for the pronunciation. Remember, Boston Italian, struggling with that. He looks like a Toronto front runner and expected to sign with Toronto, but they are showing signs in San Antonio of wanting him back there, and Houston is in, in line with everyone for him as well. DeMar DeRozan, coming in at number eight out of all the, our available players, he looks like he's going to be trade bait. Chicago cannot afford a salary next year, and that's going to be huge for them. I, I think it's almost a guarantee that either DeRozan or Levine are exiting Chicago, if not both. Coming in at number seven is Kyrie Irvin. Kyrie Irvin just yesterday came out with he will he has agreed to meet with the Phoenix Suns before the Phoenix Suns, Dallas Mavericks, and Houston Rockets. He was not getting a lot of interest garnered in the league. So in this notes section, uh, right before yesterday's news, it said not gaining a lot of interest, and he wasn't. Other than Dallas and Houston. Nobody was really looking into Kyrie Irving until yesterday with the Phoenix Suns. Next, and another guy I don't think would be in the, on the move. It's more likely that these two guys that num are coming in at number five and six, Damian Lillard and Bam Adebayo, are kind of hand in hand in this. It's either Bam stays in Miami, which is the most likely scenario with Kyle Lowry leaving for Lillard. So it's not going to be straight up. They're obviously going to sweeten the pie somehow. And then Lillard would move to Miami with Adebayo. But if that does not work and Portland does do what they've been saying, and that's going all hands on deck to provide support for Damian Lillard, Bam would be the guy to try to get out of Miami and brought to Portland. Don't see that happening, though. I think Damian Lillard will leave the Portland Trailblazers. Coming in at number four, Kristaps Porzingis. That's right. Kristaps Porzingis had not just last last year was his I guess career year you could call it. I like this from the Celtics. I think this has made the Celtics better not because of Kristaps Porzingis. Well, how does that make sense? It's because they got Marcus Smart out of that locker room. Marcus Smart was detrimental to that locker room. He was not improving that locker room. If you watch all the playoff games in the NBA, the best player had got the basketball and takes command of the offense with about a minute left in the fourth quarter and for some reason the one team that did not do that was the Boston Celtics it was Marcus Smart with the ball in his hand at the end of these fourth quarters when the games mattered that is gone and that is good if you're a Boston Celtics fan because now you can leave that to Tatum and Brown coming in at number three and I think a hot commodity Zion Williamson I know whatever you want to say about his personal life and your personal preferences about him, 
I don't really give a crap about that. I'm just focused on the basketball player and what his free agency or availability looks like. If you guys want to talk about porn stars and all that, make your own channel and I'll subscribe. But I'm not here. We're not doing that here. But injuries and off-court issues could get New Orleans some cap if they were to move him. Some of the more prominent teams that you're hearing from are Portland. Portland's been knocking at the door for Zion's availability. Charlotte is another team, and of course New York. And Houston's willing to take on any salary. Coming in at number two, James Harden. James Harden, he currently opted into the Phoenix, I'm sorry, to Philadelphia's um, player option, but then added the trade request. Just this morning or just before we started making this, James Harden had expressed, or Kawhi Leonard and Paul George expressed interest in trading for James Harden, that they would be willing to play with him. So look out for that. Chris Paul, he has already been traded, and he was ranked number one or tied for number one with James Harden based on win shares per 48. But we here at Grand Sand Sports Day to have him as a fading commodity. So like we said, comment down below any guys that we missed or any players that you think that we should add. Also, any teams that maybe you do have a hot take on DeMar DeRozan and whether he has, you know, a team that has been knocking on the door and we weren't aware of it or we just missed it, put that in the comments below. If you like this type of stuff, let us know by get, subscribing, hitting the like, sharing, sharing with a friend. All this helps out. And it would also be greatly appreciated. Like always, we wrap up with saying thank you for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.